continuing through 2 Peter chapter 2. Last week we were looking at, on purpose, evil men enter the church. Wicked, vile, wretched men enter the church. I was at a foreign church in a foreign land, and none of the people in the residence in the area spoke English. And there was an English-speaking church there filled with the ambassadors, the English-speaking people. It's called an international church. They have them in all the embassy cities. All the English-speaking people can come and hear the gospel in English, and they can get together from all, all the countries in the world. And at this particular church, there were, was a man in that church who was a devil. He entered the church as a devil. He pro professed to be a Christian as a righteous one, but he remained being a devil, and he, he entered on purpose. And Jude tells us these men enter in so they get to have sex with the women. So they get to play around, so they get to have their hands on the money and the decision making. So they get to control the things of God and not let the Holy Spirit control the church. And Peter told us 2,000 years ago that that was happening then and it's happening now. It's happening all over the world. It's happening in the United States of America. People want to come into the church and control the church. The church is not something you control. The church is the body of Christ Jesus. He's the head. The head controls the body. And what we don't have in America is enough spirit-filled churches we got a whole bunch of churches. we got a whole bunch of hot air churches. we got a bunch of churches that aren't doing what God's called us to do. What we need to get back to is the Word of God and obeying it. Hearing God, hearing the voice. We talked last week that the purpose of the Holy Ghost, when the Holy Ghost comes inside of a man, is to make that man holy. That's the purpose. We have people talking about the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, this, with a bunch of unholy people shaking around like snakes. Get the Condolina spirit in them. Oh, I got, I got the Holy Ghost today and go out tomorrow and live like the devil. You know why? It's because you didn't get the Holy Ghost today. You got an unholy one today who mimics as the Holy Ghost. The Lord, he does all things decently and in order with purpose. And he's called us to do that. And the number one thing that's going to be happening in your life, evidence of the Holy Ghost, is you will be drawn toward holiness. And you'll be convicted of your sin when you, when you made choices that weren't holy. You'll hate it if you're truly saved. And that's what he told us last week. We, we looked there in verse 3. And through covetousness shall these guys enter in with fake plastic words, just like our television. They're, oh, your blessing's coming in. You give to our ministry. The Lord's going to bless you big. And they preach grace, 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 love, 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 without ever repentance, repentance, repentance. And salvation, salvation. You're a sinner. Guys, you are a sinner first. Let's get that straight. You are not good. There's nothing good in you. You are disgusting to God. You make him sick. Your righteousness, the good things that you do, Mother Teresa, make him sick. We need to know that. That's, where, that's the beginning place of Bible doctrine and salvation. Then we say, oh, what, what must I do then? What must I do to be saved then if, if this is the case? If I'm terrible, if I'm a sinner, if I'm nasty, if a God cannot approach me. But it's the blood of Jesus Christ, guys, who allows me to approach God and allows him to approach me. Because he doesn't go down into the hog pen to get the prodigal. He stands on the porch waiting for the prodigal to get home. And you see, we're going to look at next week by God's grace, or whenever it is, coming up in a couple weeks, that when Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed, there were three men that went down and talked to Abraham and said, we're going to destroy this place. And Abraham fed him food. And we see an Old Testament Christophany where Jesus Christ himself shows up with two other angels. Why do we know that? Because it was just the two angels that went down to Sodom. Jesus Christ himself wouldn't even go there. And God doesn't go down there to Sodom. And God doesn't go to Gomorrah. God went to Calvary. And you need to make your way to Calvary from Sodom and Gomorrah. You need to make your way to Calvary from America, guys. America is disgusting. America is filthy. America is full of sin. America is under the crosshairs of the Lord Jesus Christ, and he's going to take you out. You better get to the cross. And this is the gospel. This is what the true men of God are preaching. The false men of God are preaching plastos, plastic, fluff. Oh, hey, things are great and getting better. They're not. They're getting worse and worse and worse and worse. You see, evolution teaches things are great and getting better. And they're lying, and so are the preachers who preach that same message in the spiritual sense. Things are not great and getting better. They're discussing and getting worse. That's why God's going to pull us out of here to a great and better place. Praise God. Then they get great and better every day from there. And in our lives, in spiritual lives, the kingdom of God, where God is doing work, it is happening in our souls. It's not happening on the exterior. Things are getting great and better on the inside of you. 
as they get worse and worse and worse outside of the world that you live in and step into. The darkness that you step into, you are the light. While things are, you're growing, you're maturing, things are getting better in your life. And that's true of every true believer, but it's not getting better out there in this world. And if God's not going to make America great again. America hadn't been great in a long time, but the sleeping church thinks it is. Because to them, they, they've equated greatness with material things as part of this plastic preaching that today it's not even real. It's not genuine. The genuine preaching of the Lord Jesus Christ is we are sinners. We need the salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when Jesus Christ comes in, we then choose to be his disciple. And we say, Lord, what do you want us to do? He says, I want you to get rid of you. Deny yourself. I want you to pick up a cross and follow me. Foxes have holes and birds have nests. I don't have anywhere substantiated to live, to stay, to, to be. Are you going to follow me? And if I, on a whim, tell you to get up and move, will you do that for me? That's what Jesus is telling his disciples. And we say, yes, Lord, whatever you want us to do. That's what we want to do. The call of the disciple is obedience to the voice of the Lord Jesus Christ, the discipler, the leader, the master, the teacher. And that's what we're doing. And so the church today is filled with a bunch of plastic people who don't even know God. They know religion. They know their denomination teaching. They know what they learned in seminary. They know what their Sunday school teacher taught them when they were 12. And that's what they know. But they never sit down in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ and get to know him. Guys, it's not how much theology you know. It's do you know theos. Do you, not, not the study about God. Do you know God? It's not how much Christology you know. Do you know Christ Jesus? Do you know him? Do you sit in his presence? Do you hear his voice? Do you feel his heart? Do you feel as he feels? Do you understand as he understands? Because you know this word and you communicate with him through prayer. Is that happening in your life? And then we move on to today from the plastic guys and the plastic preaching, knowing that they've got a special help prepared for them, just like Judas did. For if God, the Lord Jesus Christ, Jehovah, did not spare the angels that sinned in the very beginning of creation, but it cast them down to hell and delivered them into the chains of darkness to, to be reserved of judgment. Now, God did not spare those cats. And I want you to understand what's, what's happening here in these next several verses. We're not going to cover all those verses today. We're just covering this one verse, I believe, today. And he starts with the angels, and then he goes to Noah, and then he goes to Lot as our examples of how powerful God is and how he doesn't play. God does not play. You are not his little uh, commando, commander, and he's not your little genie. You rub God's little belly and you make him do what you want it is, you, you want him to do. The true disciple of Christ says, hey, Lord, I got nothing in this thing except your grace, your mercy, your goodness to me. I, I had nothing and you gave me everything. What is it you want me to do? Not my will, but yours be done, Lord. What is it you want me to do? And he will tell you what he wants you to do. And he's powerful. And most people don't want to pray that. They want to pray, Lord, give me this, give me that. You do this. And they take a verse totally out of context. In Isaiah, it says, concerning the works of my hand, you command me. You tell me what you want me to do, and I'll be your little genie. And that's not what God's saying. God is saying, hey, know my heart. Know my will know everything, and know that I have the power to do whatever you need me to do. And he promised he's going to give us, he'll supply all our need according to his riches and glory, not all my wants, not all my desires, not all my selfish, sinful, lustful passions. And that's how the church wants to pray today. It's all about me and my materialism, blah, 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 blah. And God says, no, it's nothing about that. It's me and spirituality. It's you sacrificing you now for the good of eternity for yourself. And you're understanding that this world is cursed and this world needs to be cleaned up. And God, Jesus, is not going to come here until he first melts it with a fervent heat. And then he says right here, talking about the judgment of these wicked preachers, these wicked people in the pulpits, these people who are filled with religion and no understanding of who God is because they don't hang out with God. They have no knowledge of God. And guys, this is why we week after week after week preach and say, get in the Bible, read the word, because that's where you're going to find the Lord. That's where you'll hear his voice and he'll direct you. He knows what's going on in your life. You know what's going on in your life. Nobody else around you really does. And he can guide you. He can direct you in these things. Let him do it. Hear his voice. Know him and be obliged to do what he says. Love it. Look forward to it. And if he says something that sounds uh, against what your game plan was, say, okay, you know best, Lord. I'm going to go with that. 
and immediately change what you thought was your game plan. Have no game plan, folks. Do what he's saying. For if God did not spare wicked angels that sinned, then he goes on and then he uses Noah and Lot. These are our three enemies that Peter lays out for us through the Holy Spirit's leadership. Satan is your enemy, the world is your enemy, and the flesh is your enemy. These demonic angels that we're told about, at the hierarchy of all that is Lucifer, Satan himself, and Paul tells us we're not wrestling flesh and blood people. When you got people in your life who are just hateful and mean and just cantankerous and always obstinate and always wanting to fight, it's best not to hang out with those folks. But you got to understand that they, they have a, a drive behind them that is leading them to do these things, guiding them, and they are following this guide's lead. They are following the devil. They are of their father, the devil. They are sinners who sin, and they listen to his voice. And Paul says we're not wrestling flesh and blood. We're wrestling principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in high places. Four realms of demon activity. Four realms of devils. Four realms of spiritual power that wants to come in and annihilate you and still kill and destroy everything that you have. Your family, your home, your everything. That's their whole ultimate purpose. And we're wrestling that. And guys, you don't come into town and say, I want to fight the biggest devil here. Even Michael, in contending with the body of Moses, durst not bring Satan any railing accusation, but said, the Lord Jesus Christ rebukes you. We don't come in and we don't fight. Come on, put up your nukes, devil, let's go. What we do is we get down there like Granny did and pray, Lord, you got to take out these devils in the life of my daughter. She has a mind of suicide. She has a mind ever since she had that abortion, Lord. She's, she's got evil in her brain. I pray you'll free her from the devil that came in when she got that abortion. And we begin to pray, and our weapons are prayer. Our weapons are the word, the sword of God and prayer. It's not going out there and going one-on-one -on -one with a devil. It's going to our prayer closet and talking to the Lord. Now let's have a little talk with Jesus. Let's tell him all about it. Lord, fight this thing. Be my, be my warrior. Be my great one. Clear the way. Do what I can't do. See what I can't see. You see it all, Lord God. Get in there and do it. And when we pray with fallibility and we mess up our prayers, the Holy Spirit corrects them. At least I prayed and I was there in the name of Jesus. And he intercedes for me and he says, here's what he meant to say, Lord. And he prays for us. He prays the right prayer because we took the time to pray. He corrects our prayers and answers them accordingly. And that's how we combat the devil. That's how we fight these four realms of massive ones through prayer, through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and his overcoming them through his resurrection 2,000 years ago. And we rest in that finished work of Jesus Christ, both in my salvation and in the defeat of the enemy and his group, his territory, his kingdom. And it's already happened in the spiritual world. It hasn't manifested itself in the physical world yet, but it soon will. And because God operates like this, it's beautiful. We can see what he's done in the past. We can see what he's doing now. We can see what he'll do in the future several times out, okay? Because he does the same thing. He's so good to us to do that for us. For if God spared not those wicked, vile angels that sinned, what they do? They fell with Lucifer. Lucifer got it in his head and his heart that he was going to overcome God. He was so beautiful. He loved the mirror. He was great. And there was only wickedness and thievery found in his heart. And God knew it. That liar was a thief from the beginning and that thief was a liar from the beginning. And that's two opposite things of the Lord. The Lord's not a thief. He's a giver. The Lord's not a liar. He's truth. And this devil, this Satan, this Lucifer, this light bringer of false light was absolute opposite in his thinking toward the Lord while he was worshiping the Lord. You see, his job, we understand in the book of uh, Psalms, is that he was the worship leader of heaven. And while he was offering the Father uh, worship, uh, there was wickedness in his heart. And that's happening all over the churches today. And that's why Peter takes us, starts us with these wicked preachers first. And then tells us they have the same wicked hearts that these devils had in heaven. And the, the God who threw these devils out of heaven and threw them in a place called Tartarus that we studied several weeks ago, months ago, the holding place until he's ready for them to, eh, to come out for judgment, the judgment on earth. This very God who kicked them out of heaven is going to kick these men into hell too. 
And it's vitally important that you and I not listen to wicked men who present plastic, but we listen to men of God who take a word of God that was given to holy men of God by the Holy Ghost who wrote it with one interpretation in mind, for the Bible is not of any private interpretation. For the Holy Ghost in times past spoke to men who had the will of God in their heart, their desire. Even Jonah, who didn't want to do God's will, did God's will. He didn't do it joyfully, but he did it. God encouraged him along. Here, fish, we're going to get this boy over there, puke him up, and we're going to get him walking in the right direction. And God directs our steps. Aren't you thankful for that? Even when we're obstinate and when we're silly. He says, I got a plan for you, and I want you to do my plan. And we do his plan, and these holy men wrote holy words, and now it's important that you take those holy words and allow them to make their way deep-seated into your heart so they become fruit producing plants in your existence. That's who you are. You become the word of God. The word of God becomes you. You walk its path. You walk its light. You walk its truth. You walk its seeds until they are fruit. We obey and we don't obey in part. We obey in whole as we know it to be. If there's anything in your life today that you're not willing to do for God, you're sinning, you walk away from it. Even if you don't know it's sin, if it's struggle, you say, Lord, I am not, I'm, I'm willing to do whatever you want. If you don't want me doing this thing, I won't do it. If you want me doing this thing, I will do it. I'm willing. I just want your will, your heart. That's where God wants us. That's being a holy man moved by the holy scriptures, led by the Holy Ghost, not these plastic fake men. And God's going to take those men and throw them straight into hell just like he did these devils. And if he didn't spare these devils who sinned against him, who rebelled, the devil conned them, and they took his con. But he cast them down to hell and delivered them, and they're tied up in chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Now, let's go back in thought to a fella 700 years before Jesus Christ who talked about the birth of Jesus Christ, who talked about the second coming of Jesus Christ, who talked about the millennial reign of Jesus Christ, who talked about the rapture of Jesus Christ, a fellow by the name of Isaiah. God told Isaiah he was looking for a man to go preach to a people who wouldn't listen. I got a bunch of plastic preachers in the pulpits and everybody's wanting to listen to these guys, but I need a real guy with a real heart, a holy heart, a holy mind, and believing in the holy God. And one day, this guy was sitting in plastic church and he looked up and saw God. And when he saw God, his face hit the ground. Woe is me. I'm undone. I'm a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of a bunch of fake people with unclean lips. And God took care of him and he, the angel, the seraphim, went and took the live coal off the altar and touched it on his lips with the tongues of the altar. He said, behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away and your sin is purged. Now, I need you to go take those clean, holy, preserved lips touched by God. And I need you to go speak to a people who will not listen to you. And Isaiah said, hey, I'll go. Send me. I'll go. And then we see all the way through, guys, read Isaiah. Isaiah is one of the most awesome books in the entire Bible. And if you'll listen to it on audio and play it as fast as you can comprehend it, play it as fast as you can comprehend it and just keep playing it. You may miss some parts, play it over again. Isaiah will become one of your favorite books in the entire Bible because Isaiah talks about Jesus. So we're looking here in chapter 14 of Isaiah, beginning in verse 4. He's talking to the prince of Tyre. He's talking to the prince of Babylon. He's talking to Satan, who always hides himself behind humans. Demons always hide behind themselves, behind uh, humans. And the, the world sings about it. Metallic sang about it. Sad but true. I, I'm your face. I'm your eyes while you're away. I'm, I'm all this, and, and you're the one who's blamed. It's the devil who's doing the work in you, but nobody sees the devil. They see you. And so you're the jerk. You're the fool. And, and if you give yourself over to the devil, you are a jerk and a fool. But even the, the people in the spiritual people on the devil's side know this to be true. And so when we see Isaiah presenting to us that God is talking to the prince of Tyre and the prince of Babylon, he's talking to the spirit behind those two, and that is none other than Satan himself. Because these kingdoms were the head of the world, and Satan always wants to be the head cheese, the head guy. The guy in the spotlight, the famous one. So wherever you see the famous world leaders and the world powers, that's where Satan is right now. And Satan is a clown and he loves a circus. Where is Satan? Where's Waldo, everybody? He's hiding behind the faces that are on TV right now. The most famous ones because he loves to be seen. 
Very soon he's going to be jumping inside of one individual and from that individual he will be seen by the entire world for three and a half years. He will be the bomb. He will be the boy. He will be the man with the plan. And it's talked about here in Isaiah chapter 14. 700 years before Jesus was born. You guys know that before any child was ever born, God was talking about one who would be born, who would crush Satan's head. I love it. I love God's plan. I love his foresight. I love what he can see ahead into. Trust him with your life. Trust him with your life. He knows where he's taking you. Say yes, obey him. Because if he spared not those angels, don't think he's going to spare you in your rebellion. He's not going to spare you in your rebellion, folks. He's going to destroy you. Verse 4. He's, he's talking to the kingdom. Let's go back one. That thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say... How hath the oppressor ceased? The golden city has ceased. Now, guys, you and I now know, 2,700 years later, that there is something called Mystery Babylon. Mystery Babylon is led by the devil. He is their king. There is a spiritual realm all around us. That is Mystery Babylon. It's a parallel universe to our own. They are active and interactive in our universe right now. You and I have been given the directive, the command by God, not to work or, or to see into their realm. We are not to be spiritists. We're not to conjure up devils and see devils, and we're not to demand to see angels. We are to live in our physical world by faith, but knowing this by faith, that there is a parallel universe going along right side of us that is a kingdom of Babylon, mystery Babylon, and its head is Satan, the very one that was cast from heaven. Okay? Do you hear what I hear? That whole song is about Satan falling from heaven like a star. And he had a tail as big as a kite and he took one third of the stars with him. These people every Christmas are singing to the devil who's dancing high above the trees. He's a star. He's a star. This ain't Jesus. Jesus was holy and lowly. The star of the diva uh, who came down. Oh, Katy Perry come down on that star shooting fire out of it at the Super Bowl. Y'all remember that? That wasn't Jesus she was riding. That was the devil. That was the devil she was riding. The star, guys, the star, the star that sits up on, high up on the tree, the angel that sits high above your tree. We gotta figure out who this, this angel is. If God spared not the angels, the star, if God didn't take care of that star, we gotta better figure it out. See, guys, today is the first day of Hanukkah. As I'm speaking, this is the 22nd of December, 2019. This is the first day of Hanukkah. This is when Mary became impregnated with Jesus, the light of the world at the Feast of Dedication and Rededication. It says, Thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, How hath the oppressor ceased? The golden city has ceased. And he controls a city. He controls a world. That's why Babylon is called a city. Because a city is a people who have the same dialect. They have the same thoughts. They have the same mind. When you go to different parts in the United States of America... Uh, and they ask for a condiment, somebody will say mustard. But if you're in Albuquerque, you're going to say green or red. Because they like their sauces. Y your condiment is a green sauce or a red sauce. Condiments are different. Lingo is different in that city. Everybody in that city will know what you're talking about. And when Babylon is the great city, it is a city-minded, a hive mind from all over the world. Devils, demons are all over this world, ran by one king, the king of Babylon. And that king is none other than Satan himself. And God's looking at him right in the face right now, and he says, you take up this proverb against that king of Babylon and say, how hath the oppressor ceased? That golden city has come to an end. And we see that now in Revelation chapter 17 and 18, the end of Satan's empire. And Satan wants what? He wants Jesus' seat. Where is Jesus' seat? In Jerusalem. And that's where his empire will finally come to an end during this segment. And then it will start over again, almost at the end of the thousand year millennium. And the people will be able to look back to what happened here to figure out what's going to happen then. And you and I can look back at what happened to Babylon and Tyre and see what's going to happen to Satan now. You and I can look back at the cross and see what happened to his kingdom at the resurrection and know what's going to happen to him in the physical world and his entire kingdom who follows him in the physical world. You see, what's going on today, all your government, the United Nations, everybody has said, you know what? 
God told us that he wants us to live by faith. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. He's the king of heaven. He's the king, the God of faith. He wants us walking by faith and not by sight. Meanwhile, they learn of another king named the devil. He's also in that same spiritual realm as God the Father, but he wants us to invoke him into our physical world. He wants us to uh, worship him in his spirit world and see him in his spirit world and invite him into our physical world. They're wanting all the devils, all these movies that they're making now, they're conjuring up the devil and wanting the devil to live in our realm, to be a part of our realm, to come invited into our realm. And we just read in that earlier verse that God has locked up these devils to be there in chains until he releases them. And what Peter didn't have in this passage is what you and I have in the book of Revelation, that there are four special of these angels tied down in the river Euphrates in chains. And when God releases them, they're going to kill Tons of people on planet Earth. That's why they have to be chained down because they kill them out. But these people who refuse God and his word don't want to believe a word that he says and want to, wants to turn it into a lie and call evil good and good evil. They turn to the devil and say, we want you into our realm. We want to open up stargates. We want to draw pentagrams and make gateways for demons to enter. We want to worship pyramids and, and create big holes, these black holes for tons of demons to enter. And that's what the world we're living in right now. And all of Hollywood and all of music and all of theater and everything, cartoons, Disney is pushing toward this end in defiance to the Almighty God who wants us to walk by faith and serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Everybody else wants us to worship in a magical kingdom outside of heaven's kingdom, a golden city that is going to be destroyed. And John tells us some things that Peter didn't know about. We're going to be discovering that as we go. And then verse four or five. The Lord hath broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. This happened in the past. It's about to happen again here within in about seven, eight years. Jesus is going to do it again. All the United Nations, all these people in the circus who are at the top, who are the top dogs, they got the billions, the millions, they got the money, they got everything going their way. They are greasy. They don't, nothing can stick to them. You can, you can accuse them of all sorts of wicked pedophilia and ch eating children and drinking their blood, and it won't stick to them. Oh, wow. And the people are like, oh, that girl's gross. And they go on, and they don't care about that girl. They don't care that Oprah does the, those things. They'll keep watching Oprah and keep gathering in her information. Ellen, they don't care that Ellen is this wicked degenerate. They don't care about that. They just love what she says, and she makes them giggle. And meanwhile, she's part of this kingdom that God is going to destroy and rip her throat out. Because she is vulgar with her throat. She's anti-God with her throat. And God's going to keep her from singing anymore and dancing like she does. Because it's Satan who dances high above the stars. He's going to take away your dance, pal. He's going to chain you down, reserved in hell, a place for you and everybody who's like you. He's broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of all the rulers. They no longer rule when Jesus Christ comes back. This is a prophetic, what he's going to do when he comes back at the end of the seven years. Verse 6. He who smote the people with wrath in a continual stroke, he just kept coming down, striking. Have you read the 21 judgments in the book of Revelation? They are continual strokes. Boom, 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 coming at you, bam, bam, until you're all wiped out. And Satan, your kingdom is all about to be finally wiped out. And everybody that follows you, all you people, you better repent and turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now on this side, Man, Jesus Christ offers you his grace and mercy. Get out of the world you're living in. That's what's causing you nightmares. That's what's causing you displeasure. That's what's causing you dysfunction. That is what's causing you depression. If you'll turn to Jesus, he promised he will bring you joy and peace and patience and gentleness and goodness and faith. This is fruit of his kingdom, and he wants you to experience that fruit, people. People in church, he wants you to experience that. Quit listening to the fake plastic liars and get into the word of God and let the Holy Ghost come through his holy word and produce holy fruit in our lives. Amen? And he who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke, he hath ruled the nations in anger, is persecuted and non hindered See, Satan came down. See, Satan, is he gets the first five seals. He's smashing. He's doing this. He, his demons get to come up and destroy half the world. His, his locusts get to come up from the army. And God is smashing these people using Satan's fist, using Satan's mind, using his anger, using his rage, using his death claws. God is using him in his judgment. God used Sennacherib. He used Nebuchadnezzar. He's used all the men in time past to be his judgment on mankind, wicked mankind. And he's going to do it all again. And it's Satan who's doing these things, but it's God in control who's doing these things. Verse 7. 
The whole earth is at rest right now. Oh, they just love life. Life's great, man. I got the Olympics coming up. We got these other things coming up. It's all wonderful. It's Oh, it's incredible. And they go forth, they break into singing, and let's get a new song, and oh, top 40 this, top 40 country, top 40 rock, top 40 rap, top 40, my favorite flavor, it's top 40, it's great, it's a song and a dance. Verse 8. Yea, the fir trees rejoice at thee, and the cedars of Lebanon saying, since you were laid down, no fellers come against us. Satan, since you were cast in hell, and since you were thrown down, nobody's come and cut Christmas trees down anymore. Christmas tree is a fir tree. Hey, the fir trees rejoice. Praise God. We no longer have to be cut down and worshiped by these fools. Saying, since you were laid down, Satan, in, in hell, no fellers come up against us and try to cut us down. Verse 9. Hell from beneath is moved for you to meet you at your coming. It stirreth up the dead for you, even all the chief ones of the earth. The chief ones of the earth are the presidents, the vice presidents, all these people, and they all have a certain head demon controlling each of them. They have a chief that you can't see who are leading the chiefs that we can see. At thy coming, it stirreth up the dead for you, even all the chief ones of the earth. It hath raised up from the thrones of all the kings. Satan himself has been in charge of this golden city, this, this city of Babylon, this mystery Babylon. He's been in charge of it. He's in charge of it right now. It's still existing, guys. It hadn't been cast down yet. This is a prophecy of what is about to happen. And God speaking in past time, like Satan's already been cast down because we know. Guys, this was 700 years before he was cast down spiritually at the resurrection. Now he's about to be cast down physically at the end of these seven years and then again at the end of the thousand years. Okay, it's all prophetic. It's going to happen again. It's going to happen again until it's finally done at the end of the millennium. Then there will be no more devil forever and a day. Praise God. Okay, and it says, all the chief ones of earth, it hath raised him up from the thrones, all the kings of the nations. He's led them. He's charged them. He's given them their commands. They've taken the commands. They're rising up from their thrones. Verse 10, all they shall speak and say unto you, are you also become as weak as the rest of us? During this whole seven years, Jesus is sending his judgments. He's sending his judgment. Boom, 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 boom. And at the end of the seven years, they're going to see Jesus confront this devil. We're told that. He's going to face him face to face, destroy him, throw him into the abyss. And the kings are going to be like, you were just as weak as us the whole time. You know what rendered him as weak already? is the cross and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Satan is already that weak. He's been lying for 2,000 years to these people. And they think he's alive, and they think he's well, and they think he's powerful, and they think he's great, and he is nothing, and his true colors will be shown the day he's confronted by Jesus, the great mirror. The word of God is our mirror, and he's, he tells you how you look, and he shows you how you are presenting yourself to the world, and he helps us correct ourselves in the way of the righteous holy mirror of liberty, the law of liberty. It shows us who we are. And that law of liberty, Jesus Christ is going to come down, look straight in the face of Satan, and Satan's going to see himself the way he is, and all the other kings of the earth who have been worshiping Satan, all the Satanists, all the New Agers, all the fake Christians, Plastos Christians are going to see that they have been following a loser, and they're going to say, you're just as weak and silly and incapable as the rest of us. Verse 11. Yep. Your pomp is brought down to the grave and the noise of your music and the, your worm is spread under thee. The worms cover thee. This word is maggots. The, the lowest you can get in hell is maggots where the worm dieth not. And these people who are great, the greatest pomp and circumstance, the king of kings and lord of lords. Guys, that's Satan. To these people. You and I, we live, remember, we live in a co-existence with two different kingdoms. You and I, they steal our verbiage. They steal our language. They steal our holy words and make them unholy. So when you and I sing to the King of kings and Lord of lords, we know that's Jesus Christ. And we know one of those kings that that includes in lords is Satan himself. Jesus is his king. But these people over here don't want to acknowledge Jesus. and They, they make Satan the highest on their pyramid. On, on, on their platform. He, he's the greatest one of them all. And then all his demons, oh, he's so great. Oh, he's wonderful. And it says, yeah, your pomp has brought you down. Your arrogance has brought you down there, Satan. And the whole world is built on pomp and arrogance. Just watch football today. That's all you got to do is just, just watch sports. These guys, they, don't, they do nothing in the world. They run up and down a court and people, oh, you're great. Your pomp and circumstance is going to bring them down. 
because it's filled with pride. All your music is going to stop and you're just a maggot. And the entire world, when you look in the face of Jesus, is going to see that you're just a maggot and you have only been a maggot for this long. Verse 12. Oh, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, you son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken all the nations? And this is telling us that he is going to be cut down at the resurrection. And it also tells us those people that won't believe the power of the resurrection, what it did to Satan, they're physically going to see it at the end of the seven-year tribulation that's about to start. As soon as the United Nations comes in and decides that they are going to divide the land of Israel, this thing is on and this thing is over in seven. And they're all going to see this. They're going to see how quickly Satan was cast down, cut down, and destroyed. And he weakened the nations, weakened the nations until God came in there. They thought he was going to strengthen the nations. They thought he was going to make them powerful. They, he, he th they thought he was going to give them etern eternity. And that's what they teach, CERN. We're going we're gonna to reincarnate you over and over. You will never have to die. We will get a time loop and you will live this loop forever and ever and ever. Groundhog Day. Truman Show. It, it'll be great. It'll be wonderful. He's lied to him, lied to him. And they place their faith in a lie. And the only thing that's happened is each country has gotten worse and worse and more destroyed and weakened. He said, this is you. Almighty one, you've weakened the nations. We thought you were weakening the nations because they were uh, going to become better because you were going to rule them. We didn't know you was, God was using you to weaken them to, till they're all weakened and they're no good. Till Jesus comes back and reigns over all of them. Verse 13. For you have said in your heart, I will listen. These are the five I wills. Now, these were the things spoken in heaven before he was cast out. When he was gathering the one-third of the stars with his tail, the dragon, with a tail as big as a kite, bringing the other stars with him. For thou hast said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. Guys, guys, follow me. Guys. If you'll follow me, one-third of the angels, I'm going to ascend to heaven. I'm going to be, we're going to overtake God. We're going to be better than him. I will exalt my name above the stars of God. There goes that star thing again. And, and that's all the other angels of God, all of other God's creation. I'll be better, bigger and better. We all will be when we overthrow them. This is Satan's lie to his kingdom, the satanic kingdom, which at that time was a holy kingdom, the sons of God. And they believed a lie and became cursed forever. And everybody who believes that same lie is becoming cursed forever. And they will not believe the truth. And God says, because you didn't love the truth, I will turn you over to this lie and you will be destroyed just like these liars. Do not believe the devil's words in this passage where he is the greatest. He's overcoming. He's higher than God. Do not believe him. Your fate is sealed. You will be in the same chains in the same hell he is. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will be king in Jerusalem. And he will be, and God's going to let him be. Because the people who believe the lie are going to see, him, see it happen. They're going to say, see, we told you. And God's going to come back in about three and a half years after that and say, see, I told you. He's going to destroy this guy and take his throne, take, take his crown, shove it on his own head, kill Antichrist, kill the devil, throw them alive into hell, and take his place in his throne in his Jerusalem. And you better believe that now by faith, folks. Because it's going to happen. It's happened before at the cross. It's going to happen at the end of this seven-year tribulation that's about to start. It will happen at the end of the millennium just like this. Just like God said. Verse 14. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. Kim Trails. I will be like the Most High. I will control the world. I'll control everything here. I'll be like him. The weather will be in my hands. The storm will be in my hands. All the gold and silver will be in my hands. Everything that the creator created, Satan wants to steal and take over and claim it as his own, that he's more powerful and better than that. He's a liar. And Jesus is about to come claim and get it all from him. Verse 15. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Fake preachers, liars, he did this to the angels who fell. He's going to do it to you. Fake Christians, fake Christianity, he's going to do this to you. You shall be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. This word is uh, hell. The word he used in back here in Peter was Tartarus. And when you see the ancients writing in their mythology about Tartarus, they say it, has, it is as far below hell in judgment as heaven is high above the earth. These angels are going to have no way of escape and they will not be remembered for eternity though they want their pomp and circumstance beginning with Satan himself. He's already destroyed and you better believe it in your heart, Christian. He can't do a thing to you. He is powerless. The only thing he has is a lie and hindrance is thrown out in your path. Do not believe this devil. He's a liar. He'll be thrown out of the pit and to the sides of the pit. 
Verse 16. They that see you shall narrowly look upon you. When Jesus Christ shows up and confronts Obama and confronts the Pope and confronts Satan, people's eyes are going to be open and they're going to squint narrowly and say, this is he, this is him who made the entire world to tremble and shook all the kingdoms with his fakery, with his fake uh, miracles, his lying signs and wonders due to science. Guys, all of Satan is an illusion. It's a magic trick created by a science you're not familiar with. Do you believe in such a thing called top secret? That there are, are a group of people that know stuff you don't know? Are you? Do you believe in a place called above top secret who knows more than those people that top secret know? then you must believe all the way up to a majestic clearance level who knows a whole lot more than the rest of them. So the crowd gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller in Satan's Gnostic knowledge loop as it does get smaller and smaller and smaller in God's real knowledge group, those that know him intimately. They're both small groups, but this small group over here serving Lord Jesus Christ is going to wipe out the entire realm of the devil through our prayers, through our fighting, through our battle, through our fasting, through our belief, through our faith. And that's what we do every day. We are warriors. We are mightier than these guys, and we are unknown. We are unseen. While we do our little work in our little desks, our little cubicles, our little hideout places, nobody ever sees us. But we are powerful. We are destroying them through our faith, through our prayer. And that's what we do. And the whole world at this time is finally going to see Satan and all his pizzazz and his shows and dancing with the stars and all his pyramid on the, on the shows and he, his Vegas and his beautiful Switzerland and all his world. And they're going to see how unmajestic it all was and how much of a lie it was and how much of satanic Tesla science it was. And you're the man that made all that earth to tremble and the kingdoms to shake, verse 17. That made the whole world a wilderness and you destroyed the cities thereof and opened not the house of the prisoners. Guys, look at the Muslims. When the Muslims come through an area, Europe, they're coming through, Europe, they're just attacking, coming in by the thousands and millions in a year. What do they do? They leave behind a wake of death and destruction. Garbage and trash and burned up. There, there's no grass. They, they come in like locusts and destroy it. They are the people of the devil. Allah is Satan. Islam worships Satan. He's the greatest deceiver of them all. Satan, Lord Satan, is the king of these people. They are his hands and knives. Instead of praying and loving and hugging and helping, they are destroying, killing, sodomizing, uh, committing sodomy and rape on little kids, torturing them, putting heroin in their veins and making them do things they don't want to do. Our friends in Pakistan are experiencing that right now. That was, they, they made the entire world a wilderness and they destroyed every city they come to. That's what's going to happen in the tribulation when Satan rules and they've been promising peace, 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 and everywhere they step is going to be destroyed. They're going to wreck it and it's not going to get better and better. But people are still going to believe lie. It's getting better. It's getting better. Things are great. And they're still going to be partying when Jesus comes back, not even knowing that he's coming. It'll be like it was in the days of Noah when he comes back the second time at the second coming. They're, they're, they're going to believe the lie and just think it's getting better and better while the whole place is burning to the ground. While the whole place is up in smoke. While the whole place is in chaos. Sound familiar? It is happening at the end of our being here, Christian, just before our rapture. Praise God. Next week, we're going to be looking at God knows how to save his people out of all this. Aren't you thankful for that? We are not, we are not assigned to this. We have a whole different assignment. Our assignment is because you lived spiritually, because you were faithful, because you were saved and covered by the blood, I'm going to save you out of this mess before I destroy this mess. That's awesome. And that's the gospel. That's the blessed hope that we as Christians have. But meanwhile, this is really going on in the hearts of people and has been since Isaiah's day, since before Isaiah's day, since before man was made and Satan fell. The day Adam was made, Satan hated him and wanted his kingdom and took it real quick. And all he did was ask a question. Does the Bible really say that? Does, does that holy book, I mean, is it really that holy? Or do a bunch of guys make it up? Or is God this jealous God and he just didn't want you have to be blessed? And all he did was ask a question. He didn't curse God. He didn't tell him to deny God. He just questioned the word. And when you question the word, you deny God. He always comes around the back door to do what it is he wants to do. Satan has come straight through the front door. They say, I hate God, and I want everything Satan wants for me, and let's do this. And that's your world leaders. Everybody at the UN that wears red shoes, they've committed child sacrifice. Just keep your eye on that. 
they made the world wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof. And they op- he's the Satan, he's opened not the house of the prisoners because he doesn't believe in mercy. He doesn't believe in granting a freedom. He, he wants to imprison everybody. And that's what the whole mark of the beast is going to be doing. Verse 18. All the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory, every one in his own house. Continuing on. But you are cast out of your grave like an abominable branch, and as the raiment of those that are slain, thrust through with a sword, and go down to the stones of the pit as a carcass trodden under feet. He says, God is going to elevate his own people, but meanwhile, Satan, you're going to be destroyed down, and you're going to look like clothes. Your royal, awesome, amazing clothes are going to look like people come and they shish kebab you with a bunch of swords, and blood and guts just gushed out over all of them, and then that clothing was set aside and thrown on the ground. That's the way you are going to be Satan. That's the way your kingdom is Satan. That's the way all you false teachers are going to be Satan. Because you worship Satan. I don't care how much you glorify the Lord Jesus Christ in your church. If you elevate sin and call it freedom of God, you are a Satanist. You are deceived and deceiving others. And you have the same fate as these guys. And you aren't the royal clothes. You're the royal clothes with guts and blood all over them that Jesus is going to be lay, leave laying in the path. I'm going to be trodden under feet. Verse 20. Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial. They're not even going to bury you, Satan. God's not going to bury them. God's not going to allow Obama and the Pope to have nice, decent burials and a nice little funeral. He's going to strike them dead, the Bible says. He's going to raise them up and throw them alive into hell. This is uh, 2,700 years ago. We were told this story, and then John came along and clarified it for us. And the Bible codes are making it even more clearer. You know what the Bible codes declared this week? that Paul the Apostle wrote the book of Hebrews. We now have a signature. God himself signed it. That thou shalt not be joined with them in burial because you have destroyed the land, and that's God's land, the land of Israel. God, God, they're going to be in Israel when Jesus kills them. And they're going to, it's going to be blood and guts. Nothing cute, nothing pompous. He's going to grab their crown, throw it on his head, and throw them in hell. You and all the seed of the evildoers shall never be renowned again and remembered again. You're done. It is finished for you. Guys, don't follow Satan. Follow the Lord Jesus Christ and his word. It's going to happen just like he said it would. It's happened already. It's going to happen again. It'll happen again one more time. Verse 21. Prepare slaughter for this children of, of, of for the iniquity of their fathers, that they will not rise, do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. God is going to wipe out every evil person. When Jesus Christ comes back, he's going to find every evil person with every kind of evil in their hearts. Everybody with the chip is going to be destroyed and killed, destroyed immediately. Then there's going to be a bunch of people who refuse the chip, and he's going to find the ones who were nice to his people and leave them alive, who who respected their God, who respected his people, both Christian and Jew, because everybody at this time will become Christian. They're going to understand that Jesus is the Christ. Everybody who accepts the way of Messiah, Jesus Christ, and his people will be spared. Everybody else will be destroyed. And he's going to repopulate the world for the next thousand years with these kind of people. But all the children of iniquity and their fathers, they are not going to rise. They will not possess the land. They're not going to fill the world with their cities. They're going to be destroyed. Do not believe the lie. You're not going to overcome Jesus. You're going to overcome you. He already has. And we overcome you by the blood of the Lamb, the word of our testimony, and we don't love our lives unto the death. You see, here's what Satanists want you to believe, and here's where people get feared. They think death is a bad thing. We think it's a great thing, because I'm not going to die until it's my time to die. It's appointed unto men once to die, and after that, the judgment. And it's a good thing. For me to be absent from you is to be present with the Lord. For them to be dead is for them to be in hell on the sides of the pit, lower than hell for eternity, forgotten, without cities, without inheritance, without everything they've been promised. They sign the line in their blood. I'm a Freemason. I'll do whatever you want. And they're signing away their lives. Do not sign away your life. You're not going to get a city. You're not going to get a world. You will not rise. You will not have a name. You're going to go down just like your fathers. You're going to go down. Verse 22. For I will rise up against them, saith the Lord of hosts, and cut off from Babylon, mystery Babylon, the name, the remnant, the son, the nephew, says the Lord. There will not be one of you left who have negated Jesus Christ, who come against Jesus Christ. I say choose him today, guys, on this side of all this judgment. You've got this preacher proclaiming this truth now on this side of judgment. And if you will just humble yourself, give up Satan's lie, accept the Lord Jesus' truth, which is the Lord Jesus himself, his death, his burial, his resurrection. Let his blood cover you. You will be remembered. Your name will appear in the book. 
you will have the rewards. You will start working on your crowns. You will have the inheritance. All the inheritance of all the saints is yours forever and ever and ever. And you will be remembered with a brand new name written in a white stone. Jesus Christ promised that you will not go down forgotten. You will only rise up and it'll get better and better and better for you if you'll choose Jesus now on this side by faith in, in his grace. Verse 23. I will also make it a possession for the bitter pools of water, and I will sweep it with the broom of destruction, says the Lord. He's going to clean you up. He's going to clean house. He's going to wipe out every evil person off this planet. He's going to do it. He said he would. He's giving you grace and mercy to repent. Now, please do it. And if you find yourself on the other side, if you hear this message, after the rapture has taken place, you still can be saved. You just deny these people, deny the mark, deny the... When you're not looking at these faces, when you see Barack Obama, you're looking straight at the devil, Satan himself, who's going to see this fate. So will Barack, so will the Pope, so will everybody. And don't you follow him. You take it unto the death. You love not your life unto the death, and you trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, and he will save you. I will also make it a possession for the, those who are very bitter and in pools of water, and I will sweep it, sweep the whole nation, sweep the whole earth with the bosom, the, the besom, it's the broom of destruction, says the Lord of hosts, verse 24. The Lord of hosts hath sworn, saying, surely as I thought, so shall it come to pass. As I have purpose, it shall stand. Guys, whatever is in the Bible is going to happen. Believe it now. Believe it. That's why I get in here and say, read your Bible. Read your Bible. Read your Bible, know the Bible, understand the heart of God. Because it's happening, it's going to happen. If, wouldn't it be great for you to just know God's heart, what's going to happen? Wouldn't that bring you great peace and joy? People want goodness and light without the word. And they're not going to find it. But the Lord of hosts, he has sworn, and whatever he has said in his scripture is going to come to pass. And this story that I've shared with you today in Isaiah chapter 14 is going to come to pass. It already did, Calvary and the resurrection spiritually, because it's a spiritual kingdom. But it hadn't manifested itself here because liars, preachers in the pulpit who are preaching plastic stuff, lies, 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 part of the kingdom. Talk show hosts, funny people at night, you know, the late night shows, newscasts, everybody's believing the lie. I encourage you to believe the truth because everything Jesus said, God said about what's going to happen, everything in his Bible is going to come to pass just the way he said it, and it will be purposed and it will stand. Next verse. That I will break the Assyrian in my land. That's Barack Hussein Obama, guys. Barack Hussein Obama is the Assyrian. And Jesus says, I'm going to snap him in Israel. I will break him in my land. And upon my mountains, where's Jesus going to come back to? The Mount of Olives. And we're told in the book of Revelation that, that the, the Assyrian, the prince of Magog, Gog, the Antichrist, the beast, the false one, is going to come against Jesus. He's going to come, snap him on his mountains. He, I'm going to stomp him under my feet, guys. Jesus is going to stomp Barack Obama physically under his feet. After he kills him, he's going to throw him down and stomp his dead corpse. Then shall his yoke depart from off all of them. You see what I see? And they're going to look narrowly and say, that's the one that caused all this to happen? When they see Jesus stomping the back of this guy. And the burden shall depart off of everybody's shoulders. He's dead. This guy is dead. And praise God, God's going to kill him and stomp him on his back. And we have a face and we have a name. And you better know what we're saying today. This is the purpose that is purposed on the whole earth. And this is the hand that is stretched out upon all the nations. The Lord's coming after you, nations. You better serve Jesus. There's only one kingdom, not many kingdoms in his kingdom. It's the kingdom of God by faith. In, the, in what Jesus Christ has done for you through his shed blood, his death, his burial, his resurrection, Believe in that today. And this is the truth that's coming upon all the nations. For the Lord of hosts had purpose, and who is going to stop it? If he has written it in his word, it's going to happen. Who's going to disannul it? And his hands are stretched out, and who's going to turn it back? His hand has already gone out in his word. His judgment has already gone out 2,700 years ago, and it's going to happen just like he said. It's going to happen just like we described. To whom it is going to happen is who we describe. The Bible tells us who it is. The Bible codes tell us it's Barack Hussein Obama and the Pope. He's going to stomp them on their backs in his town on the mountain. You better turn to Jesus Christ and live in the true faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then today's verse we read today. For if God spared not the angels that sinned against him, and he cast them down, chains and darkness, reserved unto judgment, he's going to do this to everybody that follows him. He's going to do this to everybody that's believed Satan's lie. And it's going to happen just like it did. You're not going to disannul it. The Lord has stretched his hand out in truth saying, will you believe me? Will you believe me? Will you believe me? I've sent my prophets, my holy men, 
with my holy word, with their holy pen, and will you take it with holy ears and a holy heart and receive what they said and believe by faith that whatever I've said, I'm going to do, says God.